A young shrine maiden named Mitzah is dissatisfied with her existence in the sleepy hamlet of Itamori. Please make me into a hot Tokyo guy instead. I am sick of this place. I am sick of this life. She shouts, introducing us to Taki, our other protagonist, who also happens to be the hot Tokyo boy. The first body swap between Taki and Mitsuha occurs here. It is depicted near the start but occurs later. You see, Taki and Mitsuha are living in two separate time frames in addition to two different places. When they trade bodies, Mitsuha travels three years into the future and Taki travels three years into the past. Taki is in the year 2016 and Mitsuha is in the year 2013. They think it is all a dream and do not know who the other person is during this initial switch. The two adolescents unintentionally make each other look bad in their real life since they believe they are dreaming. Then, traveling back in time, we learn that everything started 1200 years ago when a comet unexpectedly emerged and collided with Earth, forming a lake on which the town of Amori would eventually be constructed. This comet is scheduled to return, and when it does, it will be catastrophic. In the time frame of our film, Mitsuha's father deserts his family in the Shinto shrine they have been entrusted with when Mitsuha's mother passes away. Rather, he enters politics and rises to the position of Itomori mayor. After their father abandoned them and left them without a mother, Mitsuha and her sister were raised by their grandmother, who taught them the customs of the shrine, such as how to prepare kuchi kamazaki, which is created by chewing rice and then spitting it out to allow it to ferment. When Mitsuha gets older, she and her sister carry out the ritual to make her kuchi kamazaki, which is essential to tying the knot between Taki and Mitsuha. Later on, we find out that the shrine maidens worship their gods by performing specific rites. This is the reason that the shrine maidens who perform these rites have inherited a power similar to that of Freaky Friday. This gift is primarily intended to alert the residents of the town of the approaching comets and avert more disasters. Returning to the present, Mitsuha discovers that Taki is a restaurant employee through a text message she receives on his phone when she is inhabiting his body. As Mitsuha realizes she is running late, she realizes that being Taki is harder than it looks, and she is not ready to work in a restaurant. Throughout the evening, she makes a number of blunders. A spoiled customer has a fight with Taki because he cannot obtain free food. Kaldakura, Taki's senior co-worker, arrives to handle the matter. He even uses a box cutter to slash her skirt. When Mitsuha notices his co-worker's skirt is cut after hours, he offers to mend it. This surprises her, and she cannot believe Taki has a feminine side anymore. The next day, Taki returns to his regular schedule, and his co-workers ask him about his relationship with Okudura when he gets to work, but he has no idea what they are talking about. Suddenly, Miss Okudura enters and gives everyone a happy day, giving Taki a wink and causing him to blush. At this point, Taki and Mitsuha understand that they are uncontrollably switching bodies rather than dreaming. When they switch bodies, they go out of their way to help one another, and they establish ground rules by sending each other multiple messages to avoid stepping on each other's toes. According to Mitsuha's rules, he had to always act nicely and with decorum. He is also prohibited from taking a shower while within her. Taki, on the other hand, warns Mitsuha against wasting his hard-earned money on candies and sweets since doing so will force him to work more hours. They try not to, but they cannot resist enjoying themselves a little too much at the other's cost. Taki is able to win over a couple of boys to Mitsuha at school. Taki has a genuine chance to interact with Miss Okudura while Mitsuha plays about with her. When Mitsuha returns to her body, her friends and family worry about her since they have observed that she has not been herself, and they both grow angry with one another for breaking their rules. Mitsuha's friends reassure her that everything she had experienced was real by telling her about her weird behavior, forgetting her locker, and even how to style her hair. As a result, Mitsuha decides to find and meet Taki. She is unaware of the fact that they are in separate timelines, though. It was therefore three years into the future when they switched bodies. Taki is unaware of Mitsuha's identity when she is around. When Mitsuha eventually finds him on the metro, he does not recognize her because in his timeline they have not yet switched bodies. Giving Taki her hair ribbon, which she uses to tie up her hair, is her final attempt to establish a relationship with him. When she does, she introduces herself to him by telling him her name, which strengthens their relationship. Mitsuha arrives back home in time for the annual celebration held in her hometown. The comet from earlier appears during the festival. As it breaks apart, Mitsuha also perishes and all of Itamori is destroyed. After three years, Taki discovers that he is inhabiting Mitsuha's body. 
this other history takes place both before Mitsuo passes away and before Taki and her ever interact. These switches take place around twice a week at random for a few weeks. Sleep is a common trigger for the body transition. Taki goes to sleep knowing that he will sometimes wake up as Mitsuha and other times as himself. Through witnessing one another's life, Taki and Mitsuha learn more about one another during this period. They create a tiny communication system of their own. When Taki returns to his body, Mitsuha leaves messages for him to read in his diary. After some time, Taki's only desire is to finally meet the girl he has been exchanging bodies with. It never really occurs to him to ask what the name of her town is. However he absorbs her surroundings and draws the town. As soon as Mitsuha passed away in her timeline, the switch is terminated, and Taki becomes curious about the female he has been switching with. He travels into the countryside with his companions. Taki quickly learns what happened to Itomori, the town that was devastated by the comet three years prior. Except for the red ribbon Taki wore around his wrists, all traces of this girl's existence vanish, as do the journal entries Mitsuha left on Taki's phone. From there, Taki finds out about the catastrophe that befell Itomori, including the number of fatalities and the extent of the comet's damage to the town. On the final day he spent inside Mitsuha's body, Taki recollects visiting a shrine that held a family heirloom. Though he was unsure of its precise location, he was certain that it would provide a hint as to his options. He searches for a while before discovering the temple tucked away in the middle of a crater made thousands of years ago when a comet struck Japan. Taki discovers the Kuchikamazake Mitsa had created inside the temple, along with a mural that shows the comet slicing through the sky. Taki sees the past of her family and sips the Kuchikamazake that Mitsa prepared. He sees Mitsa's father go and her mother pass away. On the day the comet is supposed to hit the town, Taki mysteriously awakens in Mitsa's body once more after suddenly being able to view everything that has happened up to this point. We learn that the Kuchikamazake has a portion of Mitsuha's soul in it, and that when Taki consumes it, the two become connected and are able to switch bodies. Grandma discovers what is going when Taki and Mitsuha trade bodies, even though everyone else believes they are just having bad days. In Mitsuha's body, she informs Taki that her family has a long history of inherited spiritual prowess. Even her father, who had long since given up on the family customs, understands that the person he is speaking to is not his daughter. Taki is aware of his next task, which is to prevent the comet from destroying the Itomori people. Getting Mitsuha and his buddies together, he attempts to set up a bomb scare during the town festival, forcing the locals to flee to the school building, which is not in the comet's danger zone. The plan is implemented, but despite confusion and fear over the bomb threat, Taki's attempts to get people to leave are unsuccessful, and their warnings about the comet are not taken seriously. Taki needs to get Mitsuha back to her own timeline in order to help preserve her community, but he also needs to make sure everything goes according to plan. Taki and Mitsuha reunite at the shrine as dusk draws in and disparate realities meld together. At last the two meet and recognize each other for the first time, even though they are still in each other's bodies. As Taki gives Mitsuha her red ribbon back, the one she gave him when they first met, emotions are running high. Taki unintentionally broke their bond when he returned the ribbon, Twilight ends quickly, shattering their attempt to write each other's names on the other's palm. Mitsuha is back in her timeline, while Taki is back in his. However, the strategy to frighten everyone into the school building has failed, and the comet is ready to strike. People are ignorant of the threat. She needs to persuade her father to give the emergency services permission to evacuate if she is to have one last chance to save her family and her town. She struggles to recall the person she bonded with up there as she scrambles to run down the mountain and back into town. Taki was able to write I love you on Mitsuha's hand despite not being able to write his name. She cannot recall who wrote it or how it ended up in her possession, but she senses something within that gives her the willpower to persevere in the face of insurmountable obstacles. She makes it to her father in time, and she escapes the city right before the comet hits. The time frames combine now that the town has been spared. Mitsuha and Taki are living in the present because she never passed away. Furthermore, none of them can recall the other's name because Taki gave Mitsuha's ribbon back. It seems as though everything that had happened before now has just disappeared, but it does not mean they have completely forgotten about one another. After a span of 12 years, both of them lead regular lives, although feeling as though something or someone is absent from their existence. As we can see, Taki recently received his college degree and is currently trying unsuccessfully to find employment in Tokyo. 
Then, as one train goes by, he notices something, and he looks at it. He feels as though he may have known that individual in a previous life, yet he cannot recall where. After frenzied searching, the two eventually cross paths. Taki initially encounters Mitsa. The anime stops here when they ask each other for their names.